It's great to be here with you in the Grand Valley Church. We send our love from Denver. The Denver Church has been so inspired by all of you, your faith and your love. And it's just been encouraging hearing the great news stories of the way that God is working there. So we want you to know that you're not alone. You have about a thousand people back here in Denver that love you and are with you heart and soul. I want to give a, a series of lessons here. It's one of my very favorite series of lessons to inspire you and help you to do even greater things to the glory of God. And I want to start with a verse that I'm going to use kind of as a springboard for the series. And uh, this first week, I'm going to kind of cover the first part. And then for the subsequent three weeks, we're going to go on and cover the rest of it. But this verse is going to come from John chapter 11. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 1, 1 through 4, and then 38 through 44. Super inspiring passage. You can just listen along with me or turn there in your Bibles as well. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor, for he's been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. What an incredible miracle. This is an incredible story. It's kind of like a movie. And, and indeed, the story has stirred the hearts of readers for 2,000 years. There's been movies made on this. There's been Renaissance paintings and, and, and all kinds of different art that has come from this image. But it just captures so much the power and the purpose of God. So here's this guy that Jesus cares about so much. And he's sick. And, and they're like sending for Jesus' help. And Jesus is like, oh, I'll get there when I need to get there. And and then he gets there and he's too late. The guy's already dead, but Jesus isn't worried at all. And so he comes up to the tomb and, and they're like, oh no, don't let him out now. There's a bad odor because he's been there. This is like Middle Eastern heat, right? So he's been there for four days. And you think of how much like a, a possum on the side of the road or an armadillo or something like that can stink after a few days. Imagine like a whole man's body. Okay, kind of gross, but it's right there in the Bible. That there was a bad odor that could be coming from this tomb. But Jesus didn't care about all that because he knew what was going to happen and then he goes up to the cave entrance and he says Lazarus come forth and I always think it's kind of funny that he says Lazarus come forth it's like maybe there's all these other dead people in there that are hoping he's going to call their name but no he's just calling Lazarus and they're like oh you know I never get called you know it's like Lazarus come on down like the price is right or something like that but Lazarus hears his name and who has a voice that can be heard in death only Jesus. You know, we cry out, Lazarus, well, he's dead. He's not going to hear us. But Jesus says his name, and boom, he perks up, and then he says, come forth. And so Jesus, uh, Lazarus just comes out, and there he is, you know, takes off the grave clothes, and he goes, just let him go. And then there goes Lazarus, just living the rest of his life, completely raised from the dead. What an incredible miracle. But beyond the drama of what transpired, what I really like is this one powerful pregnant line from Jesus' mouth, from his heart. He says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? As Christians, we all want to see the glory of God. Yeah, it's, it's inspiring to hear good news from a far off land. It is. We love hearing good news from you guys. It's inspiring to hear what God is doing in someone else's life. But, but if we're really honest, we want to see the glory of God 